Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at combinational logic and logic gates in a TTL system and we're going to be looking at the first stages required to produce a traffic light system from a counter and some basic logic gates. The logic gates we're going to be looking at are the AND, OR and NOT gates today. We're also going to be looking at minimization techniques using Carno maps, K maps. We're going to be looking at truth tables and various other aspects such as converting binary code to decimal numbers. Right then, so we've got a brief explanation of how the circuit works. We have a, a clock pulse produced by some type of oscillator, could be a 555 timer. And that's counted by a counter and the counter produces a binary output, a 4-bit binary output that counts through a sequence from a decimal sequence from 0 to 15 and then repeats. And what we want to do in order to be able to produce a traffic light system is to light a sequence of LEDs in the same way that you'd light a, a traffic light that you saw on a road somewhere for example. So what I've done with this one is I've looked at the first four counts and I'm going to ask, or I'm going to try and design a circuit that lights a green LED for the first four counts. And then for the next four lights amber, for the further four lights red and amber, and for the last four lights red. And what I've shown you here is without minimization techniques applied, the amount of gates that would be required to decode this sequence just so that it lights green. And you would need to do a similar decoding exercise for amber, red plus amber, and red. And that's what these little um, rectangles here are. Um, I'm not going to show how that's done in this video. I'm hoping that the things that I teach you, you're able to apply and find the logic required yourself. Um, this is probably predominantly for my students. Okay, so we move on from here. Hello, this is a simulation of uh, the amount of gates that would be required without minimization techniques using Carnot maps in order just to decode the output of the counter so it lights the green LED in a sequence required for a traffic light system. And I'll show you a little bit about my, that in a, in a still slide, but just to show that it works, we're going to do a quick sim. We'll run through the sim here. You can see these are the outputs from A, B, C, and D. And underneath we've got the, this is the output green here. I'm just going to maximize that. So this shows a, um, a binary output and it shows A, B, C, and D. Each of these waveforms is A, B, C, and D. And for the green one, as I'll show you in the truth table, the green one starts at with a, a binary output of 0, 0, 0, 0, and it extends for four counts and then switches off. And it repeats as long as the count is running for that time there only. So without minimization, to achieve that, we need to use this amount of gates quite a lot of gates actually you can count them up yourself and we're going to show you how you can achieve this with even less gates in fact the whole traffic light system when you've done all of the minimization and you've done you've looked at all of the gates available the whole traffic light system can be done with one single gate hi let's look at some of the logic gates we're going to use for the traffic light circuit we're going to be using three gates, the most basic of all, and, or, not gate. Each gate has a Boolean expression attached to it. A dot B means A and B. A plus B means A or B. And the not gate is a special case. It only has one input, and the output is always the inverse of the input. So for example, if A is zero, the out will be 1 and vice versa. Let's talk a little bit about that now. In TTL logic, transistor transistor logic, we use binary code. In digital systems, an output can only ever be on or off. So for example, 1 is on and 0 is off. But you will also hear the terms high, low, on, off, true, false, 
5 volts or 0 volts and you have to get used to using them interchangeably. A TTL system requires a stable 5 volt supply and here are the range of input and output voltages that are used with it and you can study that further if you need to. All of the possible input combinations are represented in a truth table and they're arranged in a logical order and we can see for an AND gate the only time we get a 5 volts on the output is when we have 5 volts on A and B. You can study the other truth tables as needed. Now we'll move on. Hi, so um, I'm set up in paint here and we're going to go through the group rules of Carnot maps, K maps. We've got a grid, uh, there's 16 squares in the grid and that represents a 4 bit system. And I'm going to use a green infill to represent a 1. So as you'll see later on, when we go through the truth tables, in order to switch a various output on, we'd want it to be a 1. So to represent it in the K map, we would put a 1 in its corresponding grid. I'm going to use green. This is just about making groups. The rest will become clear later on. At least I hope it will. So for, for Carnot maps, groups must be powers of 2. So therefore you can only make groups with 2, 4, 8 or 16 squares in them. And the groups must be large, as large as possible. And generally speaking, the groups will either be lines or rectangles. So let's take this example where I infill that that would be a group of two and this would also be a group of two. But if you had a situation where you had four ones lined up like this, you would make a group of four as opposed to two groups of two. You always make your groups as large as possible. This would not be a group of two and this would not be a group of four. There was no grouping associated with the greens that I've lined up here. However, this would be a group of two. When we use squares that are in the same column or in the same row on opposite ends of the grid, they can be used as a group of two. And in this case, these four squares could be used as a group of four. That's about it as far as the groups are concerned in the grouping rules. Right, so we've got a K map here and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. First of all though, we have a truth table and this truth table corresponds to the output of this 4-bit counter here. We've got output QA, QB, QC and QD and they are shown here. And where we have the waveform high, that corresponds to a 1. And where it's low, it's a 0. And if you study this, you'll see that each of these waveforms is plotted in this truth table. So A, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, that's for B, 0, 0, 1, 1. C zero 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 one 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 that's for C and so on. For our traffic light circuit we want to be able to light a green LED only in the first four output combinations. For the rest of the time the counter goes through its count sequence we do not want the green LED to light so we need to use logic gates to decode just these four output combinations only. And I've shown you in an earlier video that that takes an enormous amount of logic gates to accomplish, which is a very time consuming and very expensive. So to, to minimize the amount of logic gates required, we need to use a technique known as a Carno map or a K map. Now the K map is actually very simple to use, but a lot of people get confused with it. We're going to start with this column here. This column here represents DC, output DC, and I've color coded it to show it there. That's DNC. And you'll note that as we go down the column 00, 01, 11, and 10, 
each of these possible combinations is represented by a grouping 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 in a similar fashion B and A which is also color coded here is represented going down the down the truth table each row in the truth table corresponds to a grid to a, to a square on the grid of the Carnot map so the first square the the top left square here corresponds directly to D C 0 0 B A 0 0 0 0 0 0 and if we want that to be switched on we need to put a 1 into that grid there if you follow through the other three combinations you will plot a 1 into each square like so so for green and for green only we would want a 1 in each one of these squares so far so good now here comes the minimization part you'll note from my earlier talk about groups that having a four ones in a line like this makes a group of four so that's a, a Carnot map group of four the group of four spans each of these values for BA so looking upwards this group of four spans each of these values for B and A within that span B changes from a zero to a one so if B changes from a 0 to a 1 within this span it's eliminated from our function so we get rid of B totally but we would also notice that A changes from a 0 to a 1 as well therefore A is also eliminated from our function looking horizontally there is no change this group of numbers only points at DC 0 0 therefore to light a green LED in our counter system we would need, need a gate system that would represent not D not C not D not C if we look at the truth table it becomes apparent that within the first four combinations for green the only two values that don't change at all and remain unique to green are not D not C as we go through the rest of it we'll see that D and C change from a 0 to a 1 a 1 0 and a 1 1 but for green it remains not D not C therefore as you saw earlier we had a gate system to represent this boolean expression here which was uh, uh, 12 13 14 gates but in actual fact we can just do it with three three gates two not gates and an and gate because remember we're just looking at and not and or gates in this part of the uh, of the series okay. alrighty then so this is the uh, this is the the green section of our traffic light system after minimization and we've got as you can see very very simple two knock gates coming out of C and D we and them together and send it to green and it gets rid of all of those other gates required we're just going to quickly simulate that so I'm going to get the grapher up somewhere wherever it is there's a grapher there I'm just going to minimize it I'm going to run the sim I'll just run that for you a few times Note that um, trace one is green and the other two are C and D. Stop that and we're going to maximize it quickly. Look, so we'll see that green only lights when both C and D are low. And for all the other time, green is off. So green is only lighting when C and D is low. Okay, good.